In this game, black is Takemiya Masaki and white is Chochi-kun. Although Chochi-kun is known for his demolition expert nickname, but in this game, Chochi-kun goes for the Moyo game. Black, 4-star opener, and white also plays this 4-star opener. Black first starts to restrict white's growth. White usually would play something like this, but since white is going for the moyo, white jumps up. And black approaches this corner, white jumps. When black jumps, white takes some points because Cho Chi Kun just couldn't resist taking some extra territories for himself. After black extends, white turns around and takes Takemiya's corner. Takemiya has two choices, blocking from here or here. Since black has some extra stones over here, so black chose to block from here. White extends, black harness, white harness, black extends, white extends again. When black extends again, since white has no interest in invading over here, so white makes this exchange too. And black forms a tiger's mouth. Now this moyo is getting solidified. Now, white with the sente plays over here. Usually, this tengen is the first instinct, but Cho Chi Kun is a bit humble with his moves. And Takemiya Masaki also takes this corner, otherwise that just gets too big. And Cho Chi Kun also blocks toward his own moyo. Takemiya extends. White, instead of playing this hane, play this small knights. When black attaches, white plays away and plays this attachment. Black harness, white extends, and black first a probing move. When white connects, harness over here. When white extends, black forms a tiger's mouth. White makes a turn in order to secure this moyo. Black harness, when white harness back, Black plays away and takes this shoulder hit and grow this moyo. White pushes, black hanets. White pushes again, black extends, white hanets. And since there are a lot of black stones over here, black is not afraid of getting cut. So black hanets, white extends again. When white extends, first Takemiya ataris this stone. White has no choice but to connect up. And Hane is back. Now, when white plays over here, black was worried about these cutting points, so black spends another move to secure these cutting points. But alternatively, black could have played this Atari. Then white is going to play over here. Black captures this stone, and white captures this stone, and black leaks into white's moyo. This way, they're both breaking into each other's moyo and erasing potentials. But in the actual game, black simply defended his own moyo. Then white gets to leak into black's moyo first. White connects and black needs to defend over here. And from here, instead of taking this stone or jumping down, white saved them for later and invades into this corner. Black again defends toward his own moyo. White extends, and instead of haneing, black extended again. White too, instead of playing the small knights, white extends when black hanets, white hanets back. Black extends this stone to leave some ajis in the corner, and hanets over here. White hanets back, black connects, and white forms a tiger's mouth. Now black bumps and looking for a push and cut. So white has no choice but to connect up and black jumps to solidify this moyo. White crawls on the second line, black blocks, white jumps, black needs to connect this cutting point, white extends, black jumps to connect back. In this situation, most amateurs including me would play away, but white plays over here. This is a great tesuji. If black cuts the connection, then white is going to cut the connection too. 
Now white can come out from here, so black has no choice but to connect up. White pushes, then black plays here. White, capturing this dome, turns into a sente. If black does not spend another move over here, then white can Atari these two stones and get some extra liberties. And black, in order to capture these stones, black needs to fill up all the liberties. That's a lot of points. That's why when white plays here, black simply crawls back. White clamps this stone, black connects. When white connects back, black first throws a stone in and clamps this stone. Now white plays over here, trying to go out, but of course, black is gonna say no. When white tries to cut the connection, of course, black is not gonna allow that. And white tries to secure this corner with this move. But this would have been a much safer move. In the actual game, Chochi Kun plays over here. If white does not spend another move in the corner, then black can jump, and this is not going to die. Even if white plays over here, black is going to connect up, and now there's a cutting point over here. If white simply connects up, then black is alive. Even if white plays here, black can block. When white connects, black can cut anywhere over here. If white connects up, then black is again alive. That's why white spent another move just to make sure the corner is white's corner. But black still plays over here. White extending is a sente. Black connects and white captures these two stones. But again, the safest way for white to capture the corner is to play this. But Chochi Kun thought this is enough. Now black tries to harass this corner. Hanes and connects. White ataris this stone. When black connects, white forms a tiger's mouth to secure this corner. Now, Takemi Yamasaki plays a very weird move that is also Tesuji of the year, which is this push. Now, white cannot extend this stone toward this side because if white does that, then black is going to cut these stones and capture them. So white has no choice but to tighten up liberties of these two stones. But here comes the second Tesuji from Takemi Yamasaki. It's this one. You still might not know why is this a Tesuji, but look at this one. If white plays here, then black can play over there. When white captures this stone, black can cut off the connection. When white captures this stone, black captures these four stones. That's a lot of points. That's why when black played this weird move, white has no choice but to capture these two stones. And black ataris these two white stones, white needs to actually take these two stones. And black plays this turn and this is alive. And you may be wondering why is that alive? Can I just capture it like this? Then all black has to do is this, and it's alive. If white goes out like this, then black can go out like this too. If white blocks from here, then all black has to do is over here. And even if white tries to erase another eye, but black is always gonna have two eyes in this corner. Chochi Kun's win rate went from over 90% to a single digit really quick. So Chochi Kun got a bit frustrated, so he started to take some territories everywhere, do as much as he can. Chochi Kun knows this one doesn't work, but what choice he got? Takemiya cuts. If white makes a turn over here, then black Atari. When white connects, black can Atari again. When white captures this stone, another Atari, and the whole group is dead. That's why white, before making this turn, white needs to capture this stone. And black extends to connect everything back up. White blocks, first it's trying to threaten these stones, but also solidifying this part of the board. Black forms eye over here. White extends one more time. 
black is completely alive. White Kosumi is over here. If black plays here, then white gets to do all this in Sente. So black simply connects. White Ataris, black connects, and white blocks over here. Black pushes in, white Tane, black push, white blocks, black push, white pulls back. Black Hanes, when white extends, black extends this. From here, both players also did more end games, but it did not change the result of the game. Takemiya Masaki was actually losing this game, but he was able to use this Tetsuji over here to take the extra corner, and at the end, Takemiya won by 2.5 points. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. See you soon and stay alive.